from the team you can trust. This is breaking news from News 8. And our Sunrise Smart Start begins with breaking news overnight. Officials say a woman is in critical condition after being hit by a car. Rochester police responding to the South Union Street around 1130 for the report of a pedestrian struck there. They say a 47-year-old was found injured at the scene and taken to the hospital with life-threatening injuries. The vehicle, a sedan, fled the scene. If you have any information, you're asked to call 911. Today marks one year since the death of George Floyd in Minneapolis. Community members are still calling for police reform and racial justice. Floyd's death after being detained by police resulted in protests and riots, including here in Rochester. Eric Hedekos joining us live with how local activists are reflecting on changes that this uh, movement has sparked. Eric Hedekos. Good morning, Mark and Leo. Well, it's a moment we'll all remember in history for sure. Uh, the moment we learned that the former police officer in Minneapolis had his knee on Floyd's neck for several minutes. Some community members I spoke with say that will traumatize them just thinking about it, just talking about it. Here in Rochester, following the death, a movement began where people marched through streets saying no justice, no peace, and say his name. Community Justice Initiative is one of the activist groups that came together more formally after after these events. Activist Tatiana Welch says after Floyd, it was Daniel Prude and then the nine-year-old girl pepper sprayed by police in Rochester. These events all drove the work of writing bills and grabbing attention of our city through more protesting. One of those bills is Daniel's Law, a legislation that would establish state and regional mental health response councils specifically for mental health crisis calls like the ones of Daniel Prude. They want the people in power to listen to them and they want to be taken serious. They want their funds to be used to protect the community that they serve, you know, things like that, reallocating money. You know, we use the word defunding, but when we say defunding, we mean reallocation to better services for our community, including mental health, including the um with the the fit team and maybe redoing the um the pick team if if we could, because there's little flaws there. Waltz says the group is working on organizing shorter protests to avoid what she calls infiltration. A year ago when riots broke out, she says that was a false representation of the movement and that kind of action will be discouraged moving forward. In Rochester, Eric had a cost, News 8. All right, Eric, thank you for that. A jury convicted former Minneapolis police officer Derek Chauvin in the death of George Floyd in April. Well, the president and vice president meeting with George Floyd's family on the one-year anniversary of his death. Meanwhile, lawmakers leading negotiations on police reform on Capitol Hill. They say they're making progress. We are joined by Washington correspondent Kelly Meyer live in Washington, D.C. this morning. Kelly, good morning. Why were lawmakers unable to reach the one-year anniversary deadline set by the president? Good morning. Well, you know, there were some key issues that they were stalled on here, one of them being qualified immunity, which shields police officers from being held personally liable. Also, the threshold to criminally prosecute police officers. Uh, these are things that have been challenging to get Republicans on board with. The jo George Floyd Justice and Policing Act has passed in the House, so it really just has been stalled here in the Senate as they're working to get Republicans Republican support on that George Floyd Justice and Policing Act. So this is why you're seeing it take so long here in the Senate, and you're seeing people like uh, Congresswoman Karen Bass from California, New Jersey Senator Cory Booker, and South Carolina Republican Senator Tim Scott working together to try and find some common ground and get this passed. So are those three lawmakers that you just mentioned uh, close to an agreement? Well, Senator Tim Scott just told reporters last night that they are seeing the end of the tunnel here, and they made good, good progress over the weekend, is what he told reporters. They've been tight-lipped around the specific negotiations and doing those in private on things like qualified immunity, like we were just chatting about. Uh, but Senator Booker said over the weekend that he wouldn't be partnered with Senator Tim Scott on this if Mitch McConnell didn't want them to come to an agreement here at the table. Some Democrats told me that they could get this through committee, and you might see a a vote here in the summer, uh, but they are saying that momentum is here to get that done. All right, we'll see how this all plays out. Thank you so much, Kelly. Chauvin will be sentenced on June 25th. Three other officers are awaiting trial. 
Turning our attention back to the forecast here locally on this Tuesday morning, warm to start. And it's just the beginning, James Gilbert. Mm, yeah, some might say a little too warm out there as we have uh, numbers in the 60s right now. Your morning commute, are really no issues, uh, at least from the weather department. Uh, we'll climb qu pretty quickly into the 70s, eventually into the 80s this afternoon. Next 24 hours, there it is, hour by hour, 86 degrees. That's my forecast afternoon high. That comes with a couple of showers and thunderstorms. Uh, let's call it a passing storm. Don't think it's worth the umbrella because 95% of the day will be dry. We'll take a look at the bus stop forecast and the last look at your eight day forecast at the end of the show. Mark Leah. All right, all right. James, uh, thank you so much. Let's get a look at the roads now with our sunrise traffic. A vehicle fire on East Ridge Road between St. Paul Street and Clinton Avenue in Rochester at this hour. Take note there and an accident in Greece, Mount Reed Boulevard at Maiden Lane earlier. Other than that, the expressways are running on time. Well, state police are investigating a fatal motorcycle crash on County Road 6 in Geneva. According to troopers, a southbound car crossed into the northbound lane around 4 p.m. yesterday. Hitting that motorcycle head on, the motorcyclist was killed in the crash. The driver of the car and two passengers were taken to the hospital with what investigators say are non life threatening injuries. The cause of that crash is under investigation. Five inmates at the Monroe County Children's Detention Center have been moved to the Monroe County Jail after a violent fight over the weekend. Monroe County says all of those inmates are 17 years old. They are now being housed in a special section of the county jail away from the general population. Saturday, two inmates at that children's detention center got into a fight. When staff members and sheriff's deputies tried to break it up, they were attacked from behind by other inmates. Four sheriff's deputies were injured in the process. Two of the offenders were being held on murder charges. Well, this is uh, obviously a result of, of Raise the Age. You have them in a, in a day area, an open area, um, you know, running around an open campus sometimes. And then you got staff out there just trying to control this, and it's a very difficult environment to control. Prior to 2019, teenagers who were charged with murder would have been held in jail instead of a detention center. Now, youth offenders can only be sent to a jail if the state signs off on that move. Well, be sure to join us tonight at 7 o'clock for the Rochester mayoral debate between Malik Evans and incumbent Lovely Warren. A recent Emerson College poll showing Evans is projected to have an early lead over Mayor Warren by almost 10% of Democratic voters surveyed. The mayor's current approval rating sits at 35% among Rochester voters surveyed in that poll. You can watch the debate on air and online at rochesterfirst.com. Let's get the latest on COVID-19 this morning. Governor Cuomo says based upon the trajectory of current data, schools should be open across the state for in-person learning come September. The governor added that remote learning served its purpose during the pandemic, but called it discriminatory and not a, sub a sustainable substitute for school. Back to school advocates say the announcement is beneficial, especially for younger students. We're missing that right now. Uh, most of these kids have been going to school maybe twice out of the week, and that's not a good thing. I think they actually learn better in the uh, in-classroom setting. Well, local school districts we reached out to say they are still waiting for official guidance from the state before making any decisions about the fall. According to New York State officials, some children will no longer be forced to wear a face mask at daycare or summer camp. The health department says it understands how difficult it is to require young children to wear a mask. It still recommends children two to five years old wear a face covering, but it's not required for that age group. Five to 11 year olds are still required to wear a mask in most settings. It is time now for the GRE Morning Business Report. The International Monetary Fund is calling for another $50 billion to rev up the global rollout of the coronavirus vaccines. The IMF says the additional money would be used to boost COVAX's capacity. COVAX is an international coalition aimed at helping facilitate equitable distribution of those vaccines. Moderna striking a deal to help distribute its vaccine outside the U.S. The company says it inked an agreement with South Korea's Samsung Biologics. The deal will allow the company to offer its vaccine in Asia and other parts of the world in the third quarter of this year. The two doses of the Pfizer vaccine and AstraZeneca's vaccine were both highly effective against the newer variants of the virus discovered in India and England. 
Pfizer's vaccine was at least 88% effective in preventing symptomatic COVID cases. AstraZeneca's shots were 60% effective against the variant found in India. Effectiveness was 50% or less after just one dose of either vaccine. According to AAA, the nation's average gas price now standing at just below $3.04 for a gallon of regular. That is down slightly from a week ago when prices spiked due to the Colonial Pipeline shutdown. But the pinch at the pump is expected to increase Memorial Day weekend. All right, here's what some folks might be talking about at the old uh, water cooler this morning. Pringles is recruiting Wendy's Spicy Chicken Sandwich as its latest flavor for summer. The stackable snacks replicate the fast food chain's spice blend in a chip form. The crispy collaboration hits store shelves this summer for a limited time. And to top it off, each can includes a code for a free sandwich. Mm. So All a little right. uh, cross promotion going on right there. Does it, you think it actually tastes like chicken? Yes. They don't. They always do such a good job with those flavored yeah, chips. That is true. Yeah, actually, Quest makes a taco protein chip. Oh, it, ta it tastes like a taco. Hmm. That's so Got bizarre. All the fat. Yeah. yeah, you know, I, I I'm just a, a big fan of Tostitos and salsa, basic. Mm -hmm. You know, because you can make the salsa yourself. It's fresh. And this is a great time, time of year, year for that, too. Right. Not that there's ever a bad time right. of year yes. for that, but this is a great time. Oh, for sure. Maybe with uh, some avocado in there, some guacamole. Yes. Service Why not? Tonight at the barbecue. Yeah, I think it's a t Tuesday barbecue. Let's do it. All right. Taco Tuesday. Taco I even, Tuesday. I didn't even do a Taco Tuesday forecast. We'll have to do the one at noon. There you go. Mark and myself. I we'll won't do be there for no, that. No, you will not. Back. I'll watch. <laughs> Tune in. It's going to be big. Not invited. There you go. Well, we might be thinking about that for the afternoon bus stop ride. Uh, by the afternoon, we'll be keeping an eye out in a couple of showers and maybe even some thunderstorms in there as well. So watch out for that. I've got 80s. It's hot. It's humid. Let's dress for that. Let's understand that uh, you will feel some muggy air as you walk out the door this morning and return home. Now, is there a threat for any severe weather with those storms? Today, not so much. Uh, could deal with a quick downpour, maybe a little bit of lightning in there as well. You see this uh, severe weather threat tracker very low, and really the threat is across just the Finger Lakes. Uh, tomorrow, that's the day we'll be watching for the better chance for a little bit of a stronger storm as there's a bit more humidity. And um, so we'll keep an eye on that. But otherwise, uh, your eight day forecast on the screen now. We're cooler into Thursday, chance for rain showers on Friday. And then, yes, we'll continue to look at the Memorial Day forecast as we get over the next few days. Hopefully, I can bump those temperatures up a bit. All right, we hope so. Thank you so much. Thank you for watching News 8 at Sunrise. Our next update coming up in 30 minutes. CBS This Morning is coming up next to be safe and have a great day. Day. Follow News 8 wherever you are on RochesterFirst.com, Facebook, Twitter, and on our app for news and weather.